Hi, everyone. How are you? I know you hate this screen, so let me see here. Oh, oh, oh. Ah, there we go. Okay, so under the fair use um, doctrine of... Fair Use Act and Disclaimer, Section 107 of the Copyright Act of 1976, there's allowance made for a fair use using the four-factor balancing act test. So a small portion of original material may be used. New York, new work is critiqued, satire or education you can use. Or if the work that you're reviewing has a commercial value or original is not diminished. And four provides that if new work is predominantly original, Pod, product of use. Um, so basically, uh, I, I need to say fair use, fair use, fair use. I want to talk about something that is fair use, fair use, fair use with this guy um, on the dad challenge. He is amazing. He is like a hero. I mean, you can't see that he I mean, I guess it's a chair there, but I kind of think it should be a cape because what he has done to the wheelchair Rapunzel situation in like one week since he's been on the case, one week or less, he's just freaking amazing. I'm so impressed with this guy. I had never heard of him before, um, but um, his channel is The Dad Challenge. And I just, let me, let me tell you all about this if you guys have not heard about Wheelchair Rapunzel. Now, uh, what I want to say also is on my channel, um, I have explained before how um, nice it is when you guys listen to the ads because I was trying to make my money honestly and making money through um, the ads because I was monetized and I believe to this date that I have not done anything to have compromised my um, situation in being a YouTube partner through AdSense. But um, what happens because of the content that I cover um, when I brought up a certain topic, the same kind of reporting happened when I was covering that topic before, where all of my videos get reported for a certain type of thing, and they go and they look and they see if any of them fit that. And it's a bigger channel, probably, reporting my stuff. And uh, so when I had narrated something that was in the New York Times, um, in the 80s, New York Times and basically every other paper, I had narrated that in a series of five and not even saying, you know, what it led to or anything it was basically something about, um, I don't want to get myself in trouble. But anyway, um, so I got a warning on my channel. I did the little class on it and whatever. And still, I, do, I don't think I did anything wrong. So I put in an appeal. The appeal was instantly um, denied. And they took away monetization for my channel. And so I know that they're still putting on um, they're still putting on Sorry, we have a little runaway situation in our neighborhood, and I see the deputies walking with a bike, so I'm like, uh oh. Um, hmm. Sorry, <laughs> easily distracted here. Squirrel, squirrel, squirrel. <laughs> anyway, um, I'm gonna get out there and start helping them look for the kiddo in just a bit, if if she's not found in just a little bit. So anyway. Um, sorry about that. Uh, so they're still running ads on my channel. So you know what? Feel free to skip them because I'm not making the revenue. I think that it's almost a conflict of interest for them to say, okay, then you don't get money for this now because we're saying you did this because what benefit is it for them to give you that money and go through the hassle of it? I mean, they're the ones de determining it. It's just such a mess. I'm so upset because those of you who know me know that I make original content. But um, one of my uh, you know good friends who, who's seen this happen with other channels was saying maybe it's because I don't say fair use in it. And, and maybe bots are just trying to listen for that too. So I'm being really careful of fair use, which of course I would because I'm showing um, a clip here anyway um, with with this, the dad challenge. But um Okay, so I have been watching Wheelchair Rapunzel for, since she came onto the scene, what, uh, through Instagram and everything, what, 
I, I don't know. I've been around probably, I think, watching her for like, what, four years, I think? So this is Wheelchair Rapunzel. You're going, why would she be called Rapunzel? Because her hair is unfortunately short. Right here, there's a backstory with that. Because I'm backstory tabby, I'm going to tell you everything. So anyway, I'm not monetized. If you love me and you care about me, send me send me your, your tips at... Um, on my cash app at Tabitha Jane 13. I think there's, I think there's a link to it on my channel. So, um, I had gotten to the point where I was making a hundred a month when I was doing good through AdSense and then down to 30 a month. And they only cut a check when you are at, um, a hundred. So I'd finally had four months in a row of $30. So I was going to be making, um, I think 111. And I don't know if they're going to cut that or what. I, I don't know. I'm so upset. But anyway, feel free to skip through the ads if you see them while I'm talking, because I'm not making the money. Wheelchair Rapunzel came on the scene. Now she has um, SMA, which I believe, in, I'm sorry if I'm wrong, but um, from what I know of SMA, it is what we used to call muscular dystrophy back in the day. We used to go around um, and have these little... Um, fundraisers where you would go door to door. I'm, I'm 50, 51. So, you know, back in the seventies, we'd go door to door and ask people to, you know, donate, you know, three cents for each, you know, jump rope that we do in a jump rope competition to raise money for muscular dystrophy. I believe that SMA is um, the newer, more modern term for muscular dystrophy. And in so in, in that, it is very tragic that she has um, a, 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 a terrible disease. I don't want that to be missed on anything. And I want you all to know that, oh, I'm not bashing a woman in a wheelchair. Ah! No, I'm bashing terrible behavior from a woman who happens to be in a wheelchair because she is gorgeous. Okay. And she had this beautiful, long blonde hair. But when she just went through this mess, she had her ex-boyfriend, boyfriend, baby daddy, um, cut her hair and it was really bad. I don't know why she would have had him do that. There's no reason to have had him go Benny Han on her hair, but it's bad. And she was able to kind of, you know, make some jokes about it herself too, um, so, you know, she was able to have some self-depreciating humor in that. And I appreciate that. You know, I'll give credit where credit is due. I am telling you, when she came onto the scene, I just adored her. And I was probably one of her best champions because she came out there and was talking about um, what life is really like. You know, the, all the questions that you want to know, but you don't want to know. Because you're going, how is this this little beautiful, you know, girl, you know, living life like this it d does she date does she d blah, blah 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 right and so she was going to college she went to college I think she got her marketing degree I think it's in marketing um and she went to college and the way that she would do it is I believe from what I could see is that she would basically have somebody room up with her and that would be her caretaker she didn't have like an official caretaker she may have made too much money through her social media to have qualified for government programs. I don't know. I don't know exactly how that went. But she would have like a college roommate or whatever and um, who would stay with her. She needs 24-7 care. She can't get out of that chair on her own. She can't go to the bathroom by herself. She can. She cannot wipe herself. And one of the problems that, you know, she has here is that she will not allow anybody to remove the tampons or um, wiper dookie dungeon or anything else like that with gloves. She thinks that's impersonal, that you need to have a bare hand to wipe her. Well, that that takes away uh, a professional caregiver in any capacity because there are rules that you have to have if you are being paid by the state. You cannot um, not wear gloves because you are subjecting yourself to disease, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm, you know what, even if it was my own husband, I would, I'd have a glove if, if I was in, well, you know what, when he, I had a nephrostomy for my fourth um, pregnancy. And um, when he was changing my nephrostomy, which was a tube for my kidney, of course he was wearing gloves because I mean, he has my fluids, but just, gross okay that's urine and blood so um
Um, so anyway, um, she'd have her little college friends partying with her and you know she had beautiful women with her and they'd be kissing you know they'd be making out you know and and she'd say that you know and she'd swing both ways and these are all alleged these are what i've seen but i'm gonna say alleged because i don't want to be in court for defamation def defaming anybody i'm just telling you what i observed so i just thought she was the cutest little thing and she would get all dressed up and go to the club she'd go to the club in that chair and she was all dressed up and everything and and she would talk about how she would groom before a possible um encounter you know because sometimes when you go to the club and you're single you might bring home a, a lover and so she'd talk about how you know she'd have her friend roommate help her whatever help her um shave down the bush and she'd get a brazilian and everything and there was no secrets and i kind of liked that because i was like it's, it's just great that she's that transparent you know she she'd have her friend mow down the the thatch or what you know what bush trimming bush trimming fair use fair use fair use bush trimming anyway i just thought it was cute she wasn't harming anybody that i could see she was having a great time her her friends, caretakers, whatever, were having a great time. I There was no problems. She started making her own merch, okay? Now, this is when things kind of got a little weird because people said that she had um, taken a design that was not hers and put that design on her shirts. And that was the first kind of little controversy. Then, when she's getting out and going to the club, being all VIP and everything, rolling in in the club because she gets to cut to the front of the line, she'd run over people's toes. And look, I'm telling you that there are times when you are in a wheelchair yourself, because I have been in a wheelchair myself for different aspects of my illness, and... As my three youngest were born in, my three youngest were born in 363 days. So twins plus one and I have six kids. And I'm telling you that I had to have a triple stroller. And by the, by the 107th time in an hour that somebody cuts in front of me in a crowded place, I'm telling you that I may have ran over somebody's toes or feet, maybe the whole entire person at, at times too. I'm telling you, it happens. I get it. I get it. I absolutely get it. But this is not what was going on. She'd be like going for the people's toes because she's VIP going to the front of the line. And if your foot happens to be on your body and it is in her path, she's running it over and saying VIP, VIP, VIP. That's the problem. Okay. Now, I hear you guys raising your hands in the back. I know. I know. Because what she was doing, she was showing a lot of different bathroom situations and how they were not... Um, uh, up to par for a disabled person. How are you supposed to get into this? How are you supposed to get into that? How's a caregiver supposed to lift her into these things at festivals and everything? I totally get it. And then she took it too far because she was filming in a bathroom and a lady, this poor woman is out there in the world somewhere. Wheelchair Rapunzel was filming in the bathroom and filmed this woman coming out of the freaking stall for handicapped people. And Wheelchair Rapunzel, in her high and mighty um, attitude that she has, and she does have an attitude, she completely, completely, absolutely degraded this woman. Now, I'm going to tell you, not all, not all reasons that somebody needs to use that stall are visible, and... I'm going to tell you, I don't know anybody who would be in a situation and there is somebody coming with a wheelchair or a walker or a cane and not yield to them to use that stall. Okay. There are a lot of people who are claustrophobic. There are a lot of people who have a bag that you may not see. There are diabetics. There are a lot of people who go behind the bigger stall for reasons you do not know. And it's nobody's business. Um, me, for example, when I was 16 and pregnant, 
you know, I was only 89 pounds when I was 16 and pregnant. But uh, then, you know, by the time I was full term, and this was in the 80s and everything, I had a eight pound, two ounce baby boy in there. And I'm telling you, I got stuck in a freaking bathroom because the damn doors, they come backwards and everything. And I could not, I, you know, I was four foot 11 and I think probably six feet wide out, straight out, straight out. Cause I don't have hips. So the baby was just straight out. I got stuck in a freaking bathroom stall. I couldn't get out. And that to this day, when I am in a stall that is too small, or I go like I walk into a stall that's too small. I remember that and how horrible it was. And I'll just go to the big one. Okay. And there are other reasons why I need to use a big one sometime that I'm not going to horrify you with right now. But it's that. And then when I go to events, um, a lot of, uh, places uh, have events that are in um, theaters that were built at the turn of the century. So you have these big lines for bathrooms and they're going to be using every stall there. Now there is an inlet. So people who need the disabled um, stall are supposed to be able to have priority to that. And everybody's making sure of that, but they're still using that stall. And let me tell you, I mean, if anybody came and they needed to use it, of course, everybody would yield and let them cut the line. There's no, there's no question of it. It's common sense. And I do not understand what she was thinking when she was doing that. Filming somebody in a bathroom and degrading them. I can tell you without being there. Based on her attitude and the what the things that she was doing building up to that, I can tell you that she sat there and waited to, for that woman to, to do that. She just she was waiting for the right opportunity to do that. When it hadn't been a situation where the woman cut in front of her or anything that, you know, it's a busy bathroom, people are using the stalls and people do not just wait and leave that open in case somebody comes by that needs to use it. It's, it's not what happens. And, um, I think that, you know, like with my small children and everything, you know, I had to use that, of course, you know, so I'd line up the kids and be stand there and don't move. You, you know what it is? It's like, it's not that somebody would intentionally cut her off. And if that had happened, then yeah, okay, then shame them. But it's not what happened. And it's just that she has this entitled shit attitude. So I still was her biggest champion. And she started, she was living with these two guys. And this guy has came out with just all of these stories. And she was living with this other guy. And that's when I believe she entered into the adult film um, realm through OnlyFans and started doing um, content. I believe that's when she started her OnlyFans content. As it turned out, um, so then she would have them as her caregivers and them as her co-stars, allegedly. And it turned out that one of the guys had been implicated um, in a series of or very serious date rape um I'm going to put it mildly like that. I'm probably probably going to lose my whole channel for saying that word. Um, fair use, fair use. But anyway, so I was in, I was informed when I was supporting her. They were like, do not because this is this. And I went down and I looked and I'm like, oh my. So she was bribing them. She wasn't paying them to be her caregivers, but she was buying them like Balenciaga shoes and whatever. And this is the way that she does it is that She's like, oh, you can live with me for free and you just have to help me a little bit. But she needs all of her meals made, be wiped, put in bed, helped with everything. She can't get in and out of her chair. And a lot of people don't understand that um, because they're, they're not understanding the bigger picture here. So what had happened from there was that situation blew up because her social media was like, you are with an R and you need to get out of that situation, blah, 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 blah. So she went on basically, I think it was Bumble and I'm not exactly sure what Bumble is. Those of you who do know what Bumble is, whatever. I think it's a hookup thing. And she starts talking to this guy who is in rehab. And she's like, Ooh, cool. You're in rehab. Why don't you get out of rehab? Right. And so 
she says she's, you know, available, whatever, and he and her got very, very inebriated and whatever else, because he says that he has to get very, very, um, affected to, uh, have relations with her and they said f condoms and they conceived a baby so he's fresh out of rehab she's a adult film actress and self-proclaimed media influencer fair use fair use fair use allegedly 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 and Well, she's on a class X drug for her SMA. She calls it her twerk juice. Now, some of you may be familiar maybe with Accutane or something like that, where when you're taking a class X drug and you're a female of childbearing age, they say you have to be on a birth control, form a birth control in order to receive this medication. Now, from what I understand, the dosage of the medication was in her so it couldn't be that she could just like stop that day that she's given this dose and it lasts say three months this is what i'm understanding from the way that this happened and additionally she takes her twerk, twerk juice i'm not exactly sure on the dosage but however it was this drug was in her given to her and she conceived while this class x drug was in her body and could not get out of it and to a be on a class X drug, a woman of a childbearing age, you have to certify that you're on birth control. Well, she didn't. And she said in the past, in the previous, that, you know, she was open to getting pregnant, but she never thought it could happen to her, really. But um, the birds and the bees, I guess, went right over her head and wherever else. And anyway, she got prego from the baby daddy who just got out of rehab and was using with her. And she kind of, um, from what people say, influenced him to um, come out of rehab and use again. So she did not go right to the doctor because somebody with her health concerns, I would think, would go right to the doctor being pregnant. I have had six kids, even when I was in the 80s, a junior in high school, and missed my period for one week, I knew to go to the doctor and say, uh, my prego, what am I going to do? Ah! Well, she waited 11 weeks. So she waited 11 weeks on a class X drug. And 11 weeks on a class X drug and Sorry. I just had to finish that up and get another drink. Um, not alcohol. I'm sitting there saying like I'm drinking. It's, um, they're called these bubblers, the sparkling water. They're really good. Watermelon lime. Anywho, she waits till she's 11 freaking weeks pregnant. And, um, for those of you who don't know, a pregnancy is, a healthy pregnancy is supposed to be 40 weeks. And, um, so it goes in trimesters. So her waiting that long is significant. In my opinion, she waited that long so that she would not be um, encouraged to not keep the pregnancy, given the risks of not only her health and the risks to her, but to the baby with a class X drug. Okay. So she goes on with a high risk pregnancy is unable to take her medication for whatever, for however long, and her baby daddy gets back into rehab. She gets a gorgeous, gorgeous high-rise apartment in Chicago. Beautiful views. And um, she, I believe, had some market um, marketing opportunities. She was given like a... Um, a halo bassinet and those of you who know my um affinity for all things halo bassinet and what they have done for the world of sids and everything um yeah i was like totally jealous because i love the halo bassinet she was doing given that and boppy and everything like that 
But then I believe she lost those promotional things because she continued to be the ass that it is wheelchair Rapunzel because she is an ass. She would put things in the halo bassinet, even though the whole concept of the halo bassinet is do not put anything in there. Do not put any loose things in there, whatever. She'd still do it and be like, I think I know what I'm doing. Um, no, actually you don't. So she would just do horrible things like that and just be just a twerp to people who were saying, hey, that's dangerous. Don't do that for your baby. You know, you personally cannot move that out of your baby's way, you know, and she's like, I, I think I could do whatever I want. And then she would sit back and have and just watch people fight in her comments. Ridiculous. But going back to um, she had her baby, had her baby early, um, a C-section. And rather than being there for her baby in the NICU, she, okay, so the baby daddy couldn't get out of rehab to be there for her birth. Okay, so he wasn't there. Well, then he got out of rehab. So then she thought, oh, the best thing to do is let's go party. So they've got this baby in the NICU. He just came out of rehab and they go partying. So the NICU had concerns as to how she was going to be able to um, deal with her addictions. And she she is a self-admitted alcoholic i think she only missed the alcoholism there is rumors that she does other things and i'm not going to get into that you can do that on your own research but um so right away there started to be concerns as to how she was going to be able to take care of this baby and her baby daddy um is he has uh borderline personality disorder and if, as you all know i have experience in that and I've talked about that and that's on a spectrum just as many many things are so um but his is a, a ex extremely volatile um type of of uh borderline he he goes from um angry to angrier very fast and it is reported that he was not living at home because he had in fact assaulted his father and I don't know if it's his father or stepfather, but that's the reason why he was not at his parents' house who reside in Florida. They were, in fact, in Chicago. So they're in Chicago, and they have the baby, and they are showing themselves drinking. And they've got this baby, and they're just doing idiot, asinine things for the baby. And she is using, like, different sticks and back scratchers and stuff and flinging toys at the baby. And... I just, it was just, I cannot explain to you how cocky, it, it's just, she gets cocky. That's what it is. It's just cocky. And she'll be like, she'll put up all these videos and be like, disabled mom hack, disabled mom hack. This is how I do things as a disabled mom with a baby. And people are all over like, oh, I love this. I love this. And then they don't understand why the comments are there because of all of the things that she's doing. Because what she did, fair use, fair use, fair use, is that then she turned her baby content as a crossover platform for her OnlyFans. So she's showing her baby, talking about being a disabled mom, and on OnlyFans. So then... There were men who are opportunistic, let's say, in their comments, and she would encourage those because that's how she was making her money. And at the end of the day, it was all about how she was making her money. So people started saying, take your baby off the internet. Take your OnlyFans links off of the fact that you're a mom with a baby. And she'd be like, she'd use, she would sit there and pit people against each other to fight about it. Because she'd say, are you saying that disabled people can't also be sex workers and be on OnlyFans? Are you saying that moms can't be on OnlyFans? And then it gets those, whole, that whole, where they're not understanding the big, the big thing. Now, anyway. 
they're in this gorgeous, gorgeous high rise and something goes down at the high rise. Don't know. The 911 call is kind of, uh, mm, iffy, but apparently her and Noah got in a big fight and she took off from him and she may have been inebriated and driving in the wheelchair and was missing. And so the hotel management or not the apartment management and everything's trying to find her and whatnot. And they can't find her. And the people were describing about how fast they've seen their grandmother get away in these chairs. These chairs apparently can just take a person. And so no one could find the wheelchair Rapunzel. She was absolutely missing from the apartment complex and everything. And baby daddy's drunk and everything. And it was a big mess. They continue to do stupid things. And child services was called repeatedly. And then what do you know, blinking overnight. And they're in Florida with baby daddy's parents, who he had not been able to live with because he had done the things. So suddenly then they, the son who had beat up the dad and was in rehab is now back there with his girlfriend, with a very serious illness and a baby and her chihuahua. And if that isn't bad enough, then the baby daddy started doing OnlyFans as well and specializing in his um, singular brown eye. And they're using the family bathroom for him to go and do his specialty brown eye shots and they've got all of this. And so they start living out of the garage. So they basically have this garage door open. Well, wheelchair Rapunzel is there. The baby's crawling on the ground. They're vaping, drinking, possibly doing drugs with the garage door open in this Florida neighborhood. And then she's doing zoomies and driving her wheelchair drunk and then they got this little bumper car. It's for three-year-olds. I had never seen it. But it's this little bumper car. And it has um, the remote control. And so she said, oh, look, you know, my baby is just like me. My, me and my mini, we're rolling, we're rolling. Well, what was just terrifying was that the... they Okay, so the baby was only nine months old at the time the motorized thing was for for three-year-olds I think it was for three to five-year-olds and the straps were not right this baby was never supposed to be in this but my biggest thing was is that they were letting that bumper car be in front of them so baby daddy's filming she's controlling her wheelchair and the bumper car in front and they've got this nine-month-old baby in this little wheeled device in front of them going behind cars in a neighborhood where any car could back up at any moment and not have a clue that there's this baby in this little bumper car. And so many of us as moms were just going, oh, no, this is like, you know, how the wheel, the, the Hot Wheels were in the 70s, where cars couldn't see them. And so, so as for as many of us who were seeing that and going, what are you doing why are you filming this? This is so scary. This is going to happen. Then all of the people who she had believing that we were just bashing on her because she's in a wheelchair are all attacking us. And it was just a mess. And nobody could do anything because she has this big following and she was loving having people attack people in her thing and getting all of these new subscribers because, oh, it's a, it's a disabled mom. And oh, she's just getting bashed on because she has a baby. No, that's not why at all. It's that she's an addict with an addict and it was just an absolute mess. So where do you go to talk about this? You go on Reddit. Well, Reddit, the Reddit threads had all of this stuff. So you can't say anything about her or that anything about her online behavior. But where else? What is she doing? So if you try to write in there, you'd get banned. And so no one could do anything and you just, you're watching this and 
just watching. To, you just know that something's going to happen. Um, and child services were there for a multitude of things. I could go on for all of these stories that you're probably hearing now as it's all coming out. But um, Wheelchair Rapunzel has been apologetic in the past and then comes back worse than ever. Baby Daddy um, has went on some really, really horrifying racist rants. So she says she wasn't with him, but then she says he was her caregiver, blah, blah, blah. Just so many things. So I know that um, as a small channel, I couldn't do anything, so I couldn't say anything. So it was important to me when I saw the dad challenge this guy come on and talk because what he was able to do was he was able to call out her bad behavior and have an interview with one of her caregivers who confirmed all of the things that we were seeing and knew was going on because poor little baby had bruises all over her and they are in the shape of fingerprints and they were in different phases of healing they were green purple, blue. And I think that maybe what happens is that sometimes baby daddy is a little more rough than he needs to be if, if she's, cause what she was doing was like putting, um, the baby like in her shirt and stuff like that. So if the baby, you know, moved and started to fall off for a wheelchair, maybe he went to catch her and maybe that's where the bruises happened. I'm not saying that they are absolutely, you know, harming this child. I'm saying that their neglect, their their addictions and their flippancy in trying to be right and and cocky has has really done them a disservice. So now apparently she says that she spent fifteen thousand dollars on an attorney trying to um keep her child well, at I think she's trying to keep her child. I think that um, what might be happening is that baby daddy's family is going to adopt the baby. But I don't know. I don't know because you don't know what's going on. So ultimately, all of us who've been trying to get her to not put her baby's face on the internet and not be doing content with her baby and OnlyFans in the same platform, what none of us could do as the thousands of us who, you know, were watching this train wreck, the dad challenge got on and called this behavior out. And in less than a week, then she put on that she will no longer put her baby online and that she is going to be doing more content on body positivity with disability back to where she was. And I just think this dad challenge guy, I think um, I just, I, I, I am a huge fan. I've been talking to about him to my friends that are, you know, on the platform about and and they've they've known about him and stuff. I didn't know. He's a big secret. So I just want to, you know, um, thank you, Dad Challenge, um, for what you've done and the information that you brought out, because I think that you are really helping to make a wrong a right. I think that Wheelchair Rapunzel can learn and can be redirected. And I think that at the end of the day, she really does love the baby, but um, she needs to grow up and realize that this is a serious situation and that she needs to not treat her baby as a caretaker, that her baby has the right to be a child herself and have a safe childhood that is not online and not being put up um, in front of unscrupulous people that... Um, could come into contact in that way. So if you guys um, have never heard of Wheelchair Rapunzel, that's the situation. Check out the dad challenge. Um, he's covering also, I guess, I guess he also has covered, you know, who too. I'm KJ. So, you know, um, I've still got to catch you all up on all of the court antics of that. But, uh, <laughs> I guess that he also has done that. So basically right now, I am just so glad that he's used his platform to make something good and and right. And he started his own Reddit page for this. So now we're able to speak freely about the concerns that we have, how and why we had them and the backstory of it all. And I am just, I'm just so, so impressed so many times with YouTube, we we see people just doing the wrong thing and, and YouTube turning a blind eye to the wrong things that happen and, and the real people who are out there causing damage, like like Katie Joy, who has uh, 
four million dollars right now in a defamation suit and YouTube won't silence her but they'll take my monetization away for a channel that's less than three thousand speaking the truth trying to speak the truth anyway but you know when you see something good you just gotta say right on so right on dad challenge thank you so much thank you big daddy for doing the right thing and um check him out guys it's amazing thanks for listening i'll talk to y'all later bye-bye